the battle over how and where Europeans charge their electric cars is expanding from the continent cities to the motorways. Power utilities, tech startups and oil majors are fighting to establish themselves as the dominant players in the fast-growing business of charging stations. But advances in electric vehicles means where they're building them is changing. Refueling conventional petrol and diesel cars on motorways has long been the domain of the oil companies, which typically have their own networks of filling stations. Several are now talking about setting up high power charging networks, creating major competition for limited space at the motorway service areas. It's a bit of a land grab to win this sector, says Tim Payne, chief executive of British charging startup Instavolt, which has raised £12 million. $16 million to install over 3,000 charging points across Britain by 2020. While the range of electric vehicles was less than 100 kilometres or 60 miles, Europe's utilities were happy to help cities and companies install slow and inexpensive charging points at homes, offices and shops, often supported by state subsidies. But Tesla, Porsche and BMW are now making battery power cars with enough range to drive across continents. Whilst the electric cars might be surging ahead, the charging infrastructure, however, remains nowhere near where it needs to be. Experts, including Charging Point and Angie, are, however, making plans to build a pan-European network of high-voltage, fast-charging stations, which can refill a battery in less than half an hour, instead of overnight as we currently have. In Britain, Instavolt is renting land from filling station operators, bringing them additional revenues from the lease as well as the increased traffic flows into their shops at the sites. In May 2017, Instavolt struck a deal with Charging Point, which itself is on a $125 million expansion spree in Europe, to install around 200 of the US Group's ultra-fast chargers close to popular roads across Britain. Morgan Stanley, the investment bank, estimates that 1 to 3 million public charging points would be needed in Western Europe by 2030, adding that while utilities have natural skills in the new industry, it was too early to determine who would put them up. Today, there are fewer than 100,000 public charging points across Europe, with only about 6% of them are the fast form, according to the International Energy Agency. Indeed, looking at their data, worldwide there are more than 322,000 public charging points. Europe, the whole continent, had less than 10,000 fast chargers, while Britain and Germany leaves around 1,500 fast chargers each. There's clearly a huge potential market here. But what are fast chargers? Well, fast in this term is a relative notion. So-called level 1 are slow chargers, they're typically installed in private homes and have power output levels of 3 to 4 kilowatts. The level 2 chargers, they got to around 22 kilowatts and typically installed in parking lots or shops and can charge an electric vehicle in a few hours. These level 3 fast chargers range from 22 up to the 150 kilowatts level and are tri-phase AC or direct current chargers. At the highest end, Ultra-fast charging docks with capacities of 150 to 350 kilowatt hours can cut the charging times of an electric vehicle down to 15 minutes or less. These docks, however, are prohibitively expensive, costing upwards of €200,000 or $240,000, and hardly any exist yet, most notably because there are so few cars that can take advantage of those rapid charging rates. Amongst the oil majors, BP, Shell and Total have all either announced plans or have launched pilot projects for electric vehicle charging stations. Few people, however, expect them to become serious contenders for a business that will effectively curb the demand for their own products. People like Shell and Total talk a lot but nothing happens. We're putting the grid connection in place, says the chief executive of Fastnet, which has 63 electric vehicle charging stations in the Netherlands. Leasing plots of land, the group wants to raise 100 million euros over the next two years to branch out into Germany, Belgium, France and Britain. Unlike utilities and charging station startups, electric vehicle makers see fast charging networks not as a profit centre, but as a loss leader needed to persuade customers that electric vehicles can drive across continents. This all-in service works for some. Tesla, for example, operates a proprietary network throughout Europe, but it's stretched thinly. The Ile-de-France region around Paris, for example, is just a handful of those so-called superchargers. 
Despite fast growth, the number of electric vehicles is still small. Their global stock doubled to 2 million vehicles in 2016, but accounts for just 0.2% of the total number of passenger light duty vehicles. Based on country targets, however, car maker announcements and scenarios of electric vehicle deployments, the IEA sees a good chance that numbers will range from 9 to 20 million by 2020 and between 40 and 70 million by 2025. However, if we're going to move to an all-V world with electric vehicles displacing petrol and diesel engines, charging stations and the infrastructure to support them will have to be made as simple as filling up. And our forecourts will be the front line in that battle.